Hello, Derek. Hi, Nash. How's it going? I just got back from the charity stream. My God, that was insane. I don't know if you stopped in for any of it. It was insane. Uh, I think I was working for some of it, and then... Uh, but I don't even remember much about the last couple of days. Neither do I! Well, okay then! Um, I did want to mention that, uh, for those of you who are watching right now, the charity, street, uh, the charity drive is still going to the end of this month. Go to that guy with the glasses. We have a link to contribute. It's for uh, One Step at a Time Camp. It's for children with cancer, a place they can go and be like normal kids. It's, it's a good, it's a good. So please send it in. We're at $20,000. Let's see how much more we can get with that. And there we please go. Please donate. Please donate. Yes, give us money. We'll give them money. We don't get the money. I'd we like to get, get the money. money, but we don't get the money. <laughs> we so... That's, what, that's why it's called charity, Nash. Yeah, we so don't get the money. Um... All right, let us see here what we have. So, I even have a story just for you. Very first story, Derek. It is, it is, it is for you. Actually, it's just a little footnote thing, but uh, I think I think you're going to relate to this one. I, I think you're going to. It's about yeah. stilt snowmobiles. <laughs> you haven't heard. Our government is spending nearly a million dollars to build a stilt snowmobile. Oh yeah! Welcome to Canada! It's in defense of the Arctic from Americans and Russians. Because the one thing you'll never see coming is a group of elite Canadian soldiers on stealth snowmobiles. I thought you already had stealth snowmobiles. They're called oh, horses! Canada! Horses! You already have them! They make noise. Have you ever been near a horse, Nash? They kind of make a lot of noise. Not as much as a snowmobile. Well, that's why they're building stealth ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready to get into this nonsense tonight? Yes, we are. All right, here we go. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead audience goes out on the worldwide interwebs, and the shot is screwed up. Thank you very much, shot, for being screwed up tonight when I'm trying to do this. And finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings on back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You. There we go. And uh, like I said, and I completely blew the entire intro. Hooray! Oh, the entire intro fucked up. Yay! All right, so like I said, our first story tonight, uh, Derek, some of you may or may not know, Derek is actually a librarian for Really Reels. He's I am. I, I have a master's degree in this stuff. Yeah. I'm not using it for that right now, but I am an actual factual librarian. Yes. The really honest to God. So I think this first story is going to hurt you. Oh, no. I know what one you're going to send me. Quite a bit, I think, the story. We've spent the last week mocking this person if it's what I think it is. No, no, no. It's worse. It's far worse. Okay, link me. Far, far worse. Um. Oh no, not this one! According to the dictionary, literally, oh, no, no. now also means figuratively. I Thank love Big Brother! Thanks in part to the overuse of literally, Merriam-Webster says the word can now mean its exact opposite. Literally, literally of course, means something that is actually true. Literally every pair of shoes I own was ruined when my apartment flooded. And we use words not in their normal literal meaning, but in a way that it makes a description more impressive or interesting, the correct word, of course, is figuratively. But as people increasingly use literally to give extreme emphasis to a statement that cannot be true, as in, my head literally exploded when I read Merriam-Webster, among others, is now sanctioning the use of literally to mean just the opposite. Merriam-Webster, you fail English. It should be impossible, but you fail English. Should, didn't. This is some bra This is some uh, 1984 shit right here, man. This is new speaking action. We broke the language. We did. We actually have broken the English language. We bo we broke it. We we violated it in terrible. Well, Merriam-Webster violated it in terrible ways. I left it huddled and shuddering in a corner, weeping for its lost innocence. So right now, literally means 
something that actually happened and something that figuratively happened at the same it's like schrodinger's word it means both things at the same time until you actually use it in context and then you find out if you're an idiot or not use of the word literally in fact now rips a hole in the time space continuum by causing a paradox yep. it's like putting a portable hole in a bag of holding you don't do that shit sure you do you, you tie up in a bag of holding, you put the portable hole attached to a tripwire, then when someone walks past, they trigger the portable hole falling into the bag of holding, and then it explodes and takes them out with it. You haven't played D&D in a while, have you? Not in a while, no. All right, well, <laughs> I've got another story coming up in next that's, that's going to make you um, feel a little bit better about us, at least, you know, us over here in the uh, uh, Western Hemisphere, I suppose. Um, this is kind of amazing. We are... As a species, getting dumber. Um, Liberia students... You haven't sent me a link. I'm giving it to you right now. All fail university admission exam. Liberia's education minister says she finds it hard to believe that not a single candidate <laughs> passed this year's university admission exam. Nearly 25,000 school leavers failed the test for admission to the University of Liberia. 25,000 people failed. Students lacked enthusiasm and did not have a basic grasp of English. Do, do they speak it like in English, the actual language of Liberia, though? Well, I, uh, well, I see the sign says "Welcome to the University of Liberia," so presumably, yeah. Wow, that's um, twenty-five thousand people. You know, there way there may actually be a way to explain this. Um. A friend of mine once described a government aptitude test that he had to take. Mm -hmm. And three pages in, uh, it's like a 10 page test, three pages <laughs> in. Yeah. It's like question 47 is um, write your name on this, uh, do not answer any of the preceding questions, write your name on this slide, hand your test in to the examiner. <laughs> uh. And he, he apparently was the only person in his class to actually uh, pass this test. He's, he was the only one who read the entire thing through beforehand. 25,000 people. Yep. Your entire school system, you fire everybody. You fire every fucking person. Uh, I'm convinced at that point there must be something wrong with how they're grading the test. <laughs> like, that, that's not a statistical anomaly. There's got to be a mechanical error in there somewhere that not one single student... Out of 25,000 people, Nash, at least one of these people knew what they were fucking doing. You can't simply have an entire country's worth of students where no one cared unless there's, like, some student possession demon or they've all been abducted by aliens. Funny you should mention that, because we oh, have no. another story no. from Africa. Oh. Another story from Africa. This is um from Swaziland. I believe that's how it's, how it's pronounced. Yeah. That's Swaziland. Swaziland. Uh, they uh, they are having their own problems with uh, with demons and 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 the supernatural. Um, but they've got a new uh, interesting solution. Swaziland bans witches from flying above 150 meters on broomsticks. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you have to understand that. Um, I mean, actually, I take a, I took a couple courses on the uh, anthropology of religion, and um, the, it's actually a fairly big. Uh, belief down there in witches and yeah um every once in a while you actually do see articles coming out of africa about things like um i think it may have actually been in swaziland about 10 or 15 years ago um there was a rash of murders that were being attributed to ninjas who were being assisted by witches well th what what Okay, just the idea here alone, it's that they have no problem with them flying below. It's, just, it's 150 meters. Right. You, you, they've got to put a regulation on that shit. You can't go above 150. Be just common Man, sense. That's, that's going to make Quidditch really hard when Swaziland tries to <laughs> the World Cup. I oh. mean, they almost had it there. The International Quidditch Association was going to give it to them. But you can't top a Nimbus 2000 and still make, and still actually make a game 
if you're limited to 150 meters. Anyone caught flying their broomstick above the height limit faces arrest and a hefty 500,000 ruple fine. Uh, which on a broomstick should not fly above the 150 meter limit, Corporate Affairs Director Sayalo Demini says. The new aviation law was highlighted after a private investigator was caught flying a helicopter equipped with a video camera to gather surveillance information. Oh, and they're calling for a hike in tax paid by witch doctors. I do love that there's a country that actually taxes you for performing magic for uh, profit. I mean, that's genius right there. I, that, that's like the exact opposite. Where, you know, Salt Lake City where they banned fortune tellers and people um, selling like magic charms and stuff. You're not allowed to do it in Salt Lake City. Swaziland is apparently the exact opposite where the government said, sure, we're do just, it. We're just gonna have to, it's, it's happening. So let's legislate the shit. <laughs> exactly. That's actually kind of a realistic attitude toward it, you know? This is genius. I. Why is Swaziland in in like role playing games full of like modern wizards and stuff, not the magic capital of the world? If this is their attitude towards it, well, I know you know it's it's one of those. If this does exist, let's figure out a way to tax the shit out of it. Yeah, that's forward thinking. No, um, that's, that's really solid thinking. Man. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now. We have all complained about how our local government, we're kind of segueing here government-wise, we've all complained about how our local government have made mistakes over time. They, you know, they've uh, accidentally cut your power line, or they broke your water main, or... Back. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm from Toronto. I know. Or they maybe, or they busted up the, the street, and they didn't fix it right. That's, it happens. Shit yeah. happens, Okay. This, this is kind of, this, this took effort. I would almost be proud of this. City of Fort Worth demolished wrong home for a second time. <laughs> Fort Worth uh, official says city has ceased all demolition operations until it can figure out how two buildings that were not supposed to be demolished were torn down by a contractor despite city oversight. It was human error, said Fort Worth spokesman, uh, spokesperson Bill Begley. There were two different types of human error. City says the first mistake happened uh, in North Fort, Fort Worth. It happened. A contractor was supposed to knock down a fire damaged building. They tore it down, but also knocked down a small living quarters behind the house. Family owns the property, says the building was vacant, but had clothes and pictures stored in it. The very next day, a second building was torn down that wasn't supposed to be touched at all. In that case, city sources say a code officer misidentified the house to be demolished. Misidentified? Well, is, is, that yeah. a, is that a five or an eight? Yeah, that's a five. Good, knock it down. No, no, well, to be fair, I'm sure the code officer is having one of those off days, you know. They broke their first pair of glasses. They're using the old one. We've all had days like that. They're kind of looking between the two. They're like, yeah, they're a little bit blurry, but, you know, that one's kind of a darker shade. It's probably got fire damage on it. This is why people need to learn to lie down in front of bulldozers. Ah, yes, the Arthur Dent approach. Yeah, it works. Yeah, up until the planet was blown up. Well, actually, But no. it worked! They they bulldozed his house down after he and Ford went to the pub for a pub. Exactly. Stay in front of the fucking bulldozer. They won't knock your house down. <laughs> well, that's just that's just silly. I mean, it sounds like the first place they uh, they bulldozed down was genuine just human stupidity, where they didn't realize it was behind the burnt down place. The second one, they're just like, <laughs> oh, that guy just gives you a fox. Well, you need me, need my, need that one. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you sure we shouldn't put those down the one that's like half burnt through, boss? Eh, you know. Eeny, meeny, miny, that one. <laughs> hey, man, you can't argue with eeny, meeny, miny, mo. That's playground law. <laughs> We're still six, right? Oh, boy. All right. Um, Yeah, house demolition bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Does his address say 1234 Literal Street or 1234 Figurative? <laughs> <laughs> Don't um, matter, both those words are the same now. Okay, the next okay. one, the next one is 
This is a thing of beauty, what you're about to see here, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of those, those rare moments in life where things just... We got video! And oh my, do we got video. Because this is, this is just... I'm going to send you the story. Just, hang on, let me send you the story real fast so you can see yep. what's happening. Because this... This is... This is genius. And police... <laughs> and we got video. Here we go! <laughs> I'm just, I'm waiting for the page to load. It's... Load page! Okay, well... Ten police cars! Chasing a moped! <laughs> this makes the OJ chase look sane! This is one of those chases that demands to be scored to Betty Hill. Blues Brothers! Blues Brothers! Oh, yep. yeah, 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 yeah! Ba 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 da 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 And here it comes from another direction! We have two shot. We have two camera angles on this shit! <laughs> uh, that's one fast moped, apparently. <laughs> well, either that or those are really slow police cars. I'm just... <laughs> we've, been, uh, we've been watching Teen Titans recently, and I'm just reminded of Beast Boy standing in front of a bunch of girls at the pizza place. You want to take a ride on my moped? You have a moped? Nope, but I'm saving up for one. <laughs> this is a moped you could apparently fight crime on. This is for... You could certainly commit crime on it. This is Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, police say a man is facing seven charges... After he led police on a moped pursuit Friday night near the southeast side of Fort Wayne. <laughs> According to the police department, uh, an officer pulled over Lagren Smith, 40, who was driving a moped. Uh, Brooks said Smith initially pulled over, but then refused to speak with the officer and took off on his moped. After more than 10 Fort Worth Police Department squad cars followed Smith on his moped, pursuit led police around a large side of southeast Fort Wayne, Police said Smith got off his moped and attempted to flee on foot. You know he was probably faster running away than he was <laughs> on the damn moped. Brooks because said, if you "Watch this, this chase thing. They keep accidentally overtaking him, <laughs> stopping, and he goes." Fast <laughs> Brooks said the pursuit speed speed topped out at twenty miles per hour. <laughs> He may have found the best way to outwit the cops in that case. They're not used to pursuing someone that going that slow. <laughs> He's had this much trouble since we had to trace down, uh, track down that guy on the rascal. <laughs> this is—I mean, this—he's found the loophole. Yeah. This guy has found. He's, it's, he's done it. Now all I have to do is get, like, a fleet of bank robbers on mopeds? <laughs> so the cops are just going to shoot past them. They'll turn down an alley and that's... Exactly! This is... The cars are useless, yes! <laughs> we found the loophole! Well, you know, we have to get somewhere. We have to uh, deal with the weird forehead aliens or whatever the hell was in that anime. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh. What fans are, there are so many of them around this city, and people drive them like morons. Speaking of driving like morons, you just set me up tonight, man. <laughs> yeah, have you ever gone to a, to a restaurant and just hated the service, hated everything about it? Yes, yes, I have. What'd you do? Not leave a tip? Uh, didn't leave a tip. In one case, complained to the manager, okay. etc. Well, I bet you didn't uh, crash a motorhome through the front door like this guy did on purpose. <laughs> and you got, I got to put this on the big screen, that fucking picture. Holy shit. Look at, look at that fucking picture, kids. Jesus Christ. And I love it even better. It's from a town called Boring. So the headline is, <laughs> Man intentionally crashes motorhome into Boring Tavern. He cut it in half! He did! Holy shit! That is amazing! A man intentionally drove his motor home into the Timber Pub and Grub Tavern in Boring early Saturday. The establishment was closing down for the night. Only a small number of people were still milling about the time of 2 a.m. No one was hurt. Police found the driver walking around afterwards. The driver's been identified as Larry Dale Karash. 
Driver did not appear to be injured from the crash, but had several self-inflicted wounds on his arms. Driver was sighted, transported to the area hospital, where his wounds will be treated and his mental health evaluated. There is nothing in this article that explains why the fuck this happened. There's something in this article that explains how the hell he managed to escape mostly unharmed from that. I know! That's right where your head is. Yeah! Well, if I'm gonna guess... And just by the way this thing is stuck into the wall, I think he came from the future. I think what we're looking at here, Dash, is one of those time-traveling Winnebago's. It materialized in the wrong damn place. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay, someone in the- all right, the channel. Uh, Zoid says, it's not boring anymore! Oh. And uh, um, this one, uh, Empty Head Gamer. Hey, Kool Aid! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah! Tardis, go home. You are drunk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just it. Jesus Christ! That yeah. What did That's they? What happens when your time machine has, has to get up to eighty-eight miles an hour? <laughs> what did they do to this guy? I don't... Seriously! Don't, I, oh, I, yeah, they're asking, did they have pizza inside? That might yeah. be it. Uh, Mysteries, they had, they had fucking... That, that's it. They had fucking pizza. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's really telling, though... <laughs> okay. I suggest... I am the one who knocks! <laughs> <laughs> kudos, sir, kudos. <laughs> oh god damn it's, it's just the fact that it doesn't look like he tried to crash through the front door uh, and if you're really pissed off with the place and you're gonna drive a vehicle through it you <sighs> want to drive it through the front door well it, it sends a message <laughs> this sends a message i have no idea what i'm doing yeah we're inept criminals guys it wouldn't be rda and what the fuck is wrong with you without inept criminals i just want a better class of villain you know? <laughs> so it's Grandpa Max, there are no aliens here. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, let Ben drive the Winnebago. Okay. All right. We have one more tonight. And that's, you know, there's, there's no, this is just beautiful. I, I've got to say. This is one of those moments in life where you just kind of take step back and just appreciate it. I love this headline. Man blows up house inflating air mattress. <laughs> German man caused 150,000 euros of damage to his rented house after trying to rep repair an inflatable mattress. <clears throat> Being new in town, he had no furniture, and now he has no windows or doors. 41-year-old, who has not been named, moved to town and brought the self-inflatable air mattress that he had, as he had no furniture. But the mattress was leaky, so he used an industrial-strength puncture repair spray to try and fix it. This reacted with the inbuilt electric pump, causing a violent explosion which threw him across the room, ripped doors off their hinges, and smashed windows. He had to be taken to the hospital to treat for minor cuts, Man was lucky to escape with minor cuts and an injured wrist. Uh, okay, experts believe that heat from the electric motor ignited the gas in the tire ceiling. How much ceiling was this fucking <laughs> thing? <laughs> I, I mean, to cause that big an explosion. <laughs> a fucking air mattress? Oh, Nyung, it... Nyung in the channel. He fusrodod himself. You soul fizzy lifting drink! <laughs> <laughs> Botch roll? Yes, that's another one. Uh, he wanted a bouncy house far too badly. <laughs> Talk about a blowjob! Oh! <laughs> really? That's. That's fucking amazing, though. Okay, Casbo up. Wow, his couch fucked him. <laughs> it's Soviet Russia. Couch fucks you! 
What part of Germany was this in? It may once have been part of Soviet yeah. Russia. Oh my god, this is just... I mean... Fuck's sake! That's impressive! Look at that! I'm gonna put that in the big screen! Fucking look at that! That is amazing! Yeah. That's... Wow. You know, the problem was, without the proper ventilation, if that stuff was flammable, it was also getting him high. Yeah. So yeah, but he... But it's sprayed more! This isn't sticking! This shit ain't even working! Well, before I saw that bit, I was wondering, like, what the fuck did he fill it up with? Pure oxygen? Nope! He... yeah, there was fumes. Yeah, wow, man, that's... And that's I... a safety warning, kids. Proper ventilation. That's proper ventilation! <laughs> from exploding. I was gonna fix an air mattress, then I got high. <laughs> Looks like a Tim the Toolman Taylor air mattress. <laughs> so I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Jesus Christ. And that guy's gotta be standing there afterwards like, wow, I feel stupid. <laughs> I'm just impressed. That's That is just one of those... Huh. That story is going to get him laid at some point. In the <laughs> Baby. You want to hear how I blow so hard? I blew a house up. Oh my god. I, I, blew, I will blow the walls down. He huffed and he puffed. And... I raised the roof about ten feet, bitches! Um, so what have we learned this week? We've learned... That it is possible to break a language. Yeah, and there are going to be Cthulhu creatures coming out of those cracks. You know, we we've have infected broken. English. Yep, we've we've it, we, yeah, English is is now we we're going to unmake creation eventually. That's what's going to happen. The tenses are wrong, man. The tenses are wrong. <laughs> uh, me fail English? That impossible. <laughs> We've yeah. learned, speaking of failing, we've learned there is there is such a thing as a perfect fail. 25,000 people can't be wrong. <laughs> or in fact, they can they be wrong. They can be wrong. Yeah, that's the whole problem. Uh, we, we learned that it's okay to fly on your broomstick. Just keep it below 150 meters. Got to be mindful of air traffic. You know, be courteous and to your fellow travelers. And the best way to fund your social services is by taxing witch doctors. Tax the witch doctors, yeah. Because, you know, don't tax the rich, don't tax the middle class, tax those motherfucking witch doctors because they can just make more money. That's what magic's for. That's what magic's for. There you go. Um, we learned that <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, fuck it up again. Why not? Why not? Uh, it's the gambling approach to urban planning. We've learned that if you want to do anything illegal, your escape vehicle of choice is a moped. Don't try and outrun the cops. Let the cops outrun, outrun you. you. <laughs> There's going to be a get. It's going to be like Hell's Angels riding around on Vespas pretty soon. You watch that shit. Oh, uh, we learned. That, I don't even know what we, well, I don't even know what we learned we about that. We learned that air mattresses are the new weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> I don't even know what we learned from the fucking Winnebago, though. Oh, from the Winnebago, um, we, we have learned that you can apparently bisect a Winnebago using a house and still escape unscathed. There you don't go. try this at home, kid. Seriously, don't try this shit at home, but it is possible. Apparently. Don't try this at home. We're what you call idiots.